Hi, my name is Matt Holliday, and welcome back to what is going to be the end of this part of my class on Go. I want to have a few parting thoughts for you, if you're willing to put up with me for one last segment. So if you've come from the Python world, you know that there's like the Zen of Python, and there's some other ideas like this for other languages and systems. Okay, Go has its own little proverbs. This is a selection of them. I haven't put them all on here. A couple of them are very particular. I want to start and focus on the most important one. Clear is better than clever. Okay, and when I talked about why Go, you know, there's this book that came out last year from the Google folks on software engineering at Google. And where they say, you know, clever is something for neat programming, but if you're doing software engineering, clever is an accusation. We don't want to be clever. Right? Not in the normal way of clever, meaning let me write these complicated one-liners that nobody else understands just to show how smart I am. That kind of clever. Okay? We don't want to be clever. We want to be clear because we want our programs to be readable and maintainable. Okay? So on that thing, I want to bring up a very famous quote. Again, Tony Hoare, or really Sir Tony Hoare, got his uh, Turing Award like 40 years ago for his contributions. Okay? And in his speech, he gave this quote, that there's two ways to build software. And I'm just going to paraphrase this. I'm going to shorten this even more. You can read the quote while I'm talking. Okay? Build your software so it's obviously right, or good, or correct, whatever word you like. Okay? It should be obvious that when people look at your software, they can figure out what it does and that it does the right thing. Okay? Because the alternative by being clever is to actually make it difficult. Okay? And if you need to hide your bugs, I guess being clever is a good way to help hide your bugs, but we don't want to do that. Now, I want to back this up with an image. Okay? Because I hear this word, and I'm, we're going to talk about this word, the word elegance, or I want to build elegant software. So I'm going to tell you right here, elegant simplicity is a thing. Elegant complexity is not. Elegant complexity is a train wreck. Elegant complexity is a trap. I have in my professional career watched companies spend, or I really should say waste, I've watched companies waste millions and tens of millions of dollars on failed software projects because some software engineers, senior software engineers, really principal engineers, if you will, decided to be clever. Let's build something that's elegantly complicated, right? And that's just, it's just not a thing, okay? You find elegance in simplicity by making it as simple as possible, but no simpler. Now, that's something that was attributed to Einstein. He didn't exactly say those words. He had a speech he gave in the 1930s, and somebody walked away and said, well, what he said in effect was, make it as simple as possible, but no simpler. And in a sense, that's just an application of Occam's razor, right? From a software perspective, build, just enough, build what you need, just enough to make it work, and add complexity, add abstractions, only when they're necessary to get done what you need to get done, okay? Anything else and you're just making this big, heavy thing that's going to come crashing down on you. And I've seen a whole bunch of people have it come crashing down on them. I want to introduce you to a few really good presentations. They're not about Go, specifically. Right? Like Rich Hickey is the guy who invented Clojure. Okay? And yet, I think they all really do apply to how to build software in Go. If you haven't seen them, they may help change your mind a little bit about, you know, what is it, what is it to, be, to try to keep things simple? I particularly like this notion of software that fits in your head, all right? It's about microservices, but it's also really about this concept of, you know, if it doesn't fit in your head, how are you going to work with it? Because software is something that happens primarily inside your head. If somebody says, hey, I've got this complicated program, it's a million lines of tightly coupled code, I'm going to tell you from experience, it's probably not going to fit in anybody's head. Okay? And what you eventually happen is different people working on different parts of it and like, they're like this old proverb about the blind men and the elephant, right? They feel different parts of it, but nobody knows that they have an elephant, and they don't agree on what they're holding on to. Right. So, I think these are really good presentations. Obviously, I don't endorse everything anybody says about everything, but I think they're worth watching. Okay. Um, 
Now, I have a resource repo, not a page, but I guess, you know, if you drill down through the readme, you'll get there. All right, matforbiz slash go dash resources. It's a place where I've tried to put together books, blog postings, videos, particularly videos from um, the old gopher cons. Right, you can find them in various places. I've tried to sort of systematically put them together, along with some stuff about building cloud software and building software generally. Now, I, I need to add some more stuff to it because it's been a little bit since I've added stuff to it. So the most recent GopherCon isn't there yet. Um, it's a public repo, and feel free to suggest things and make me a pull request. I'd love to see it become a little better. There are other repos out there that have things like repos of Go software. The intention here is to have a place where particularly learners, beginning intermediate learners, can find the books and the blog posts and you know some of the ones that have been seen to be very worth reading. And the videos, again, that you know, like the videos I showed on the last page, you'll find them all there, okay, that will help educate you. Right? I'm going to tell you that the most important thing you can do for your career is don't stop learning. Okay? <clears throat> I started in the day of Fortran and punch cards and teletype machines. And most of what you see on this picture, this museum stuff now, right? Nobody does punch cards and teletypes. A teletype you'll find in a museum, right? But I've managed to keep going, learn new technologies, all the way up to doing Go and cloud development. And I'm not done. I don't know everything there is to know about Docker and Kubernetes. I may never. You know, and in five or ten years, if I'm still kicking, there'll be something new. Right? I will learn and adapt to it. And that's what I recommend for you. The most valuable thing you can do is develop yourself. Okay? Take a class, read a book, work on a project to continue learning, not just practicing the skills you learned years ago, but to continue developing new skills and new technology. Now, it doesn't have to be a fad. There are a whole bunch of fads out there that I'm not paying attention to. I won't name any of them because somebody will get pissed at me, right? I don't think Go is a fad. I don't think developing in the cloud is a fad, okay? I think those are pretty solid things to be working on. But I recommend to you that you just, you just keep going because in 10, 15, 20 years, depending on how young you are, you may still want to do this, right? but you don't want to be doing the same technology. I would not have a lot of value in my career if all I knew how to do was Fortran 4 and, you know, and try to use a, 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 you know, a laptop the way you would use a punch card machine. Wouldn't go very far. Um, I recently saw an interesting post, a tweet, that was sort of like, well, how do you keep going as an individual contributor? Because, of course, there are a lot of people who have an engineering career and they go from being an engineer to being a manager. Unfortunately, they never teach you how to be a manager. They just, they just throw you off the dock into the water and hope you swim. All right, I won't even go there. I'm just not going to go there. Okay, But, you know, how do you have a, a decade, two decade, three decade career as an individual contributor? And the answer is you keep learning. You find some new projects to work on, some new technologies to work on. If you're at a company where you really can't do anything different or new, it's time to find a new one, okay? And now I've come to the stage, I'm going to say this is stage four of my journey, which is to start sharing it, okay? And you don't have to wait until you've been doing this as long as I have to teach. And I didn't wait. I, I taught stuff all along, right? I was teaching people in the 90s object-oriented programming. You know, I was teaching C to people who hadn't learned C yet, right? So, you know, teach, because teaching helps you learn, and teaching helps everybody else learn and develop themselves. Okay, so, you know, that's sort of who I am. I haven't said much about myself, but keep learning. Now, you know, if I were Steve Jobs, I would hold up this little thing and say, oh, one more thing, and so I'll do that, okay? This is the end of the class that I was teaching last year on Go. All right, I've covered Go, and I've covered some Go tools. I have some new material I'm going to start developing, so in the near future, I'm going to develop a little class on building web apps. That's not unique. It's, it's certainly been done before. I'll do it my way and give it my take, and I'll add some more videos, and they'll be free. Right? So stay tuned. Come back to my channel. There will be some more.